Coming up in today's show, it's a light news week, but we've got some fun special guests. What's good, everybody? <laughs> this is the wrong shot. <laughs> <laughs> what's good everybody and welcome to another episode of the what's good games Ooh. podcast your source for video game news commentary analysis and funny stuff every friday i'm one of your hosts andrea renee joined by miss Brittany brombacher hello and welcome back rihanna manuel hello and mr danny pena is here hello yay friends we're so, so glad that you guys are here yeah, yeah. so glad to be here it's been a while since i've been in the studio i know Way too long. Before we go any further, I want everybody out there, if you are in a safe place, to raise a glass to D and R over here. <laughs> That's right. Rihanna and Danny got engaged. Congratulations. Yes. Cheers. 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 So Yay. happy for you both. Yes, Thank take you. a sip. Mm. I wasn't going to pretend like we were going to go very far without um, <laughs> without uh, acknowledging that. If you guys follow either of them on social media, you probably already saw this announcement. But as friends of the show, we love you both and are very happy for you. Um, so, I mean, how was your trip overall? You guys were in the Dominican Republic where yeah. it all went down. Now you're mm -hmm. back at that, that newly engaged glow. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I had everything planned and it was really ah. good. That surprised her big time. I yes, I got her. totally <laughs> caught off guard. Here's another thing. Uh, a great friend of ours, Maria, and also this one here, we're I, in on it. I don't, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. And it <laughs> did not give anything away. Way. It was a perfectly pulled off caper, and I'm very impressed by everybody involved. Yes. But yes, it, I was hugely surprised. It was a beautiful moment, yeah. and uh, I'm really very excited to yes. marry you. And Danny, the, were the, you nervous as fuck, though? Were you worried that something was going to like get fucked up along the way? No, I was more worried about, well, first of all, uh, I just I just saw the ring the day that I proposed to her, like actually minutes before minutes I proposed before. to her. Wait, what? Whoa. That was the, the first, first time, time I got to see the ring. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, yeah, because uh, the thing is, I didn't want to send it to our house, so I'm like, all right, let me send it to I her mom. Found it. <laughs> that and sounds her, right. And her mom oh. was the one that that gave me the ring when Reed wasn't paying attention, and yeah, that's how everything happened from there. But I was that part wow. I was nervous. I'm like, oh my god, how am I gonna put it off? Because I love surprises, so I wanted to surprise Reed big time. So it was good. It was good. We managed to uh, to make it happen. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I love love. Yeah. It's so good <laughs> that people are in love. It's wonderful. We're happy for you. Yeah. Um, but Re, you are wearing a G4 shirt because for everybody who has been under a rock and not known that <laughs> Rihanna is the director of brand at G4. Yeah, you guys she announced is. that you're finally launching this week. Yes, we can finally talk about it. We have a launch date. All of the, the building materials are finally in. <laughs> That's good. Because if you know anything about building in a time of quarantine and COVID, it is hard AF. But yeah, uh, stuff is going up and I'm going into the office soon, I'm masked up and everybody's vaccinated and can't wait to actually sit next to coworkers and create some stuff for you to see. So November 16th. That's the big day. It's the big day. It's our launch day. We're going to have lots of cool stuff between now and then that you can engage with. And yeah. Have you guys announced any programming? We have, yeah, of course, Attack of the Shows coming back, X Play. Yes. We have a new esports show, Boosted, is coming to our channel. That's the one that Avili May is hosting, right? Yeah, yeah, Avili. She's great. Yeah. She's, oh my gosh, did you see her League of Legends <laughs> video that they yes. just put out for mm -hmm. Worlds? Oh, yeah. my God. She's so, so much fun. talent. <laughs> <laughs> no, Avili is amazing. Um, Golden Boy is going to be over there. You'll see uh, Austin Creed, a.k.a. Xavier Woods, showing up. There's there's lots of great people popping up on the esports stuff. So, yeah, we're really excited. Spoken like a true director of brand. I'm so go. proud of you. No, <laughs> Look I'm, at you. I'm very proud of Riga. She's been working really, really hard this year, her and the team. So, congrats to everybody with her. Yeah, Thank well, you. we'll be we'll be watching. We'll be keeping our eyes peeled on how everything oh, yeah. rolls out. So I've got a lot of friends that are working over there. Yeah. Um, well, thank you to everybody who is here watching the show. We know we don't normally take this much time at the top of the show. We have been trying to get right into it. But, you know, when we got the homies here, we got to make sure that they <laughs> feel the love. But we do have a little bit of news for you guys, and we will get to that in just a minute. But I want to say thank you to this month's Patreon producers, Chewy's Godson, Alex Rogopoulos, David Icolucci, Ferris Atia, Justin Foshi, Matthew Goderen, Punctified, and 
if you want to get a special shout out here where we say welcome to our Patreon community, patreon.com slash what's good games is the place where you can check out our offerings. We've recently retooled them and slimmed them down. Now you have three mm. memberships to choose from. So head on over there and uh, see what we got. Like you can get the show ad free, for example. Speaking of ads, this show is brought to you by ExpressVPN and Demon Slayer, but we'll tell you more about them later. Brittany, it looks like we have a couple new podcast reviewers. We have Chill206 and Ert Ranger Truett. Not going to lie, at a quick glance, I thought this said something about eating turds. I don't know where my <laughs> mind was at. <laughs> at the time, it was clearly in a whole other plane of existence. But yeah, thank you so much for these podcast reviewers. You know, we mention it every week. It really does help us out. It helps people find the show. And if you write something like fun and witty, you know, I'll, I'll read it out here out loud on the air. It's great. Get a little shout out, if you will. We, I love all the sappy ones, too. Don't get me wrong. They make me very happy. But, you know, yes. to stand out these days, you have to be funny and witty. That's just the way it goes. Yeah, there I are a lot of rules. sappy ones. You guys are really kind to us. So thank you yes. very much to everybody who has been taking the time to write a review. It really does make a difference for us. All right. Into the news we go. First <laughs> up, Final Fantasy XIV has surpassed 24 million players, Damn. becoming the most profitable Final Fantasy game in the series. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I don't know why I got so dramatic there. Um, <laughs> IGN.com, Matt Kim writes, during a recent hands-on preview event for the upcoming Final Fantasy XIV and Walker expansion, director Naoki Yoshida revealed that Square Enix's most popular MMORPG recently surpassed 24 million players, making it the most profitable in the series. Speaking to press in a digital preview event, Yoshida revealed that player count has hit 24 million players in 11 years after it was originally released. Can you believe it's been around for that long? That's I think wild. I, I think I just forgot mm -hmm. that Final Fantasy 14 has just been like rolling in the background. Just <laughs> yeah, I've been playing. I think the first time I played the uh, Final Fantasy was Final Fantasy 2 for the oh. Super NES. Ooh, date that yourselves. was a long time ago. That was like early 90s. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but uh, yeah, what Brittany? What what is your favorite? Final Fantasy game for you. Uh, uh, if I can just like my wide shot, Andrea, thank you very much. You can kind of see back here, my friend. It's a whole collection of Final Fantasy IX figurines. It is the uh, best Final Fantasy IX. Uh, you can fight me all you want. I don't give a rat's ass. <laughs> thank nine you for coming good. to this nine, talk. You, you know, I skipped nine and I <laughs> played it. I, I, but, but wait, there's a, there's a reason why I skipped nine. The reason this is when PlayStation was releasing PlayStation 2 and it came out for PlayStation 1 during that time and i skipped it, it and but then i i replayed well played it for the first time when it came out for game pass and um i like it it's oh, really good okay. really okay. good yeah you redeemed yourself my friend so that was a close one Dan. <laughs> that, that was, was, a, that was a close one <laughs> i was a little yeah. nervous for you a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> i need a drink almost after that her congratulations yeah i, I, I did <laughs> i'm saying i'm coming i'm coming i saw to her emotions i'm like oh my god this is not good it's <laughs> not looking good <laughs> Um, just a couple other highlights from the article because I don't want to fully go into Matt's preview here. If you guys want to learn more about it, of course, IGN.com, you can read the entire thing for yourself. But I thought it was interesting that um, Yoshida Asan said, it is perhaps unbecoming of me to say it in terms of our business, but we've been able to achieve great success. Moving forward, we're going to spare no expense with our investments to ensure that this game continues to be one which our players can enjoy. So if Ooh. you are a fan of Final Fantasy XIV, it sounds like Square is going to be dumping a bunch of money into it. So that's a, quite you know a commitment. What? Yeah really excited about so i've tried to play final fantasy 14 a few times it just never really hooks me it was to like kill 10 mud crabs which i know mud crabs aren't in the game don't get mad at me but there is this weird like stardew valley slash it's being described as like stardew valley slash animal crossing post po post launch patch it's like a tongue twister that's coming to it have you guys heard about this no Oh, yeah, yeah, no. yeah. So it's coming eventually. So this also comes from Matt Kim at IGN. So it sounds a lot like Stardew Valley or Animal Crossing Oh, called Island Sanctuary. The director, Naoki Yoshida-san, shared more details about this upcoming mode and what you can and can't do. Um, essentially, it sounds like you are on a deserted island. You can build things. You can raise animals. And like that sounds mm. very dangerous, but very exciting for me. And maybe you too, Andrea. Maybe you'll get it back, back into some Animal well. Crossing-esque activities. It's interesting that you bring up Animal Crossing because, unfortunately, due to the date of the Animal Crossing Direct, we aren't going to be able to include it in today's episode, but we will be talking about it on next week's episode. Because if you remember, when Janet was on the show, we talked about the fact that Nintendo said on October 15th there's going to be a new Animal Crossing Direct, so I don't think Final Fantasy is going to be able to pull my attention 
from Tom Nook, just being honest. What if they launch this island sanctuary and they're like, Yoshida Sun comes on stage and he's like, yo, there's this one woman named Andrea Renee. And she had had all this fantastic feedback for Animal Crossing. And we decided to take all of her feedback and implement it into our new mode. Would that do the trick? Uh, listen, a girl can dream, right? <laughs> a girl can dream. All I want <laughs> is to be able to craft multiple things at one fucking time. See? If I could have one thing on my list, that would probably be it. Actually, Sorry. no, I'd probably have a, I probably would need to rethink my one thing. But that's a good one off the top of my head. All right. Yeah. Um, uh, congratulations to the entire team at Square who works on that game. Y'all killing it. Uh, and the next story that I want to talk about is one that we mentioned a few weeks back. But now a turn of events has occurred. Epic Games now credits Among Us <laughs> Inner Sloth as the inspiration for Fortnite's imposter mode. Hmm. So if you guys remember when imposter mode came out, it was clearly super popular because a lot of people like the game mechanic that Among Us clearly propelled to stratospheric levels of fame. Obviously, this idea is not new. We talked about it back on that episode that other games and other tabletops that have done this idea before about like this sneaky murder and figuring out who it is right but i'm really glad to see that this turn of events went down so now that epic has finally acknowledged the source of its inspiration writes Eurogamer, for Fortnite's social deduction in space imposters mode the brand has begun in earnest on twitter pointing to an official collaboration with among us and its developer inner Slav. in response to a tweet announcing Fortnite's 18.2 update which is also credited excuse me, which also credited Among Us as the inspiration for imposters, Inner Sloth offered a googly-eyed emoji before the official Fortnite account swept in with a hey at Among Us game. Since you're here, we've got something we wanted to ask you. A little more forced chumminess <laughs> follows in the insufferable <laughs> manner of these things. <laughs> I love it. But it all ends in an affirmative from Inner Sloth after Epic writes, Big fans, we never got to talk about how you inspired us. What do you think about working on something fun together? Hmm. Mm. I, I'm, oh. I'm wondering, if it wasn't for the community, you think all this would be happening, though, this conversation or, at all, or what? I got to say, I don't think so. No, nah, I don't think so yeah. either. I, I think... Mm. I, I think they're... You're probably right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 I, I hesitated for a minute just because the community took up the flag, but it was the developer who publicly spoke out that I think caught Epic's attention because I don't think that Epic truly cares what their naysayers think. They are very good about managing community feedback with Fortnite, right? We've seen that over the last few years of development yes. of that game. Yeah. But I think we've never really seen a developer come forward publicly to be like yeah dog that sucked why'd you do that to us because remember if you go back fortnite the the original game it wasn't battle royale at all <laughs> it was right. yeah it was um before the storm no uh, that's a no. I, I, survival oh, God, what that's the called? name of life is strange <laughs> yeah. save okay. the world it <laughs> save there it is. Yeah. yeah but but see uh when they added battle royale in the game the developers of of pub g they never they never mentioned anything publicly about it i mean the community uh, did uh, did they yes they did they did i don't remember but, I, but, but what you're saying it, it wasn't an official response but there was like i remember brendan brendan green yes definitely saying stuff when fortnite launched their battle royale I, I did we see anything about the ping system being lifted from apex no I mean, I, don't know, I mean, I didn't, to be clear. I did not see anything. Mm. Does it but exist on the internet? Sure. Highly likely. <laughs> right. Yeah. But what Danny's saying is, like, this isn't the first time that they've been known to kind of go in and sweep up another mode, if you will, right? And I think that yeah. was the whole thing. Borrow. It's like, mm -hmm. bar inspired. borrow. Yeah, inspired. There's a lot of inspiration going on there. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because Epic especially has been, like, we're the David and Goliath. Look at us fighting the evil overlords, Apple, for the whatever, the good of all development studios, blah, blah, blah. But then they're also like, we'll take that. Thank you very much. And yeah, it was a thing where the developers were speaking out and they even had been trying to collaborate with Epic for a while. And, you know, I hope they got like a big fat wad of cash. 
yeah. or something. I really hope yeah. they do. Good for them. Like, I don't need Epic to come out and publicly apologize because I think that's what a lot of the community is looking for because they feel mm-hmm. personally wronged by this. But at the end of the day, like, who's been wronged by it is inter- wronged here. You know, interpret that as you will. Inner sloth. So I hope, like, there's some good behind the scenes cash flow happening because, you know, like, it was it was a little a little gross from, like, the layouts of the maps to so they even called them imposters epic did yeah. like can you call them like tricksters or like traitors or something different and they didn't so good on them go buy a yacht cheers <laughs> go buy, go a buy a yacht, yacht. <laughs> cheers <laughs> um but yeah well i guess we'll we'll wait and see mm. what uh what the future holds Brittany. <laughs> I heard there was a new trailer. Mm. Also, I'm not even going to be coy. I watched that thing multiple times. It was damn good. <gasps> Yay! I'm it so was happy really to good. Hear that. I was, the whole time I watched it the first time, I was watching it with John. I was like, this trailer fucking kicks ass. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my God. Yeah. It's, I mean, there's always going to be the naysayers online, right? The people are like, oh, this movie looks so fucking stupid. It's like, what are yeah. you expecting? Like, honestly, are you expecting the next blockbuster hit? Like, I don't know what the fuck. Uh-oh. Anyway, yes. We're we talking have... about the Welcome to Raccoon City yes. trailer for everybody we... who's like, what's going on? Yeah, we talked about this last week. I was really excited for it, and it came out. And there's two different trailers. I've watched both of them multiple times. Um, I did a live react to it. It, it. Fucking glorious. I loved it so much. So, Danny, you said you've also watched this as well. Yes. And, that's... and Andrea has. Okay, but you have you have questions, you said. I feel like... Oh, boy. The graphics and then, like, the oh, special the effects it kind of seemed cheap to me i don't know, like very low budget i don't know hmm. I, I, I i don't know i gotta see the full movie but i was not impressed with the trailer I, I, i'm sorry <laughs> if i'm killing the vibe here oh, but shit. i was not i was not impressed i was not impressed I, i'm me, liking we were talking earlier <clears throat> about final fantasy 9 and how you not having played it and i said i was gonna go in and swoop re off her face stealer from <laughs> you know, you know what i think is w- the reason why i w- was like this looks so good is because i have recently played the remakes and like there's like some like shot for shot from the video games yeah. in mm-hmm. that trailer and so i think it's such fan service for people who've played Mm -hmm. the the games that i think that was what really impressed me about it but it also didn't seem like some of the more cheesy resident evil movies we've gotten in the past that have been a little bit like this looks like yeah calling it b horror is like a compliment but i i don't yeah, Britt, this is your time to shine. Yeah, tell, go, us, tell us all I, about I, it. I will shine. So Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City is a... I don't want to call it a retelling because the director, Johannes Roberts, is trying to be very like one-to-one as much as he can of Resident Evil 1 and Resident Evil 2. Now, what's interesting about that is that if you've played Resident Evil 1 and Resident Evil 2, you know in the games they're several months apart. So they don't run concurrently. But in this film, he's tying the two games together to make a film where these events are happening happening at the same time. So that's like what you should know about it. Um, there's a few major differences <clears throat> in this movie as to what happens in the game. So for one, and I mean, this is all in the trailer, so I wouldn't consider the spoiler territory, but if you want to go into this movie knowing as little as possible, like I guess, get the fuck out. So in this trailer, you have Chris and Claire Redfield who grow up apparently in Raccoon City, and Claire sees something that scares her so much that she decides to flee Raccoon City and then come back and look for her brother, Chris. Now, that's definitely new. Um, She saw something so scary as a child, but she's been talking to the journalist from Resident Evil 2, uh, Bertolucci. Oh, God, what's his name? Bertolucci. He's the journalist. Anyway, he... I'm not going to spoil that. But anyway, he's like this conspiracy theorist, or at least that's what it looks like in the movie. And she and him are exchanging words, and so it has her so freaked out that she goes back to Raccoon City to be like, yo, Chris, something's happening. And in this movie, Raccoon City is a ghost town. Um, there are some people there, but it sounds like they're all very, very sick. And of course, Chris is like, Claire, you're, you're, you're wild. You don't know what you're talking about. And that's kind of like where it cuts off with her story. And then it cuts to Leon's side of the story, uh, which is he is – I love that they're doing this. So he is hungover from a breakup with his girlfriend. So he broke up with his girlfriend, super hungover from drinking so much, which is why he's late to the to the first day of, of the job at Raccoon City Police Department, which, I mean, I didn't know that was actual canon until, like, not that long ago, but it is. They obviously changed it for RE2 Remake. Anywho, so in this movie, Leon is not, like, kind of the serious – police officer that you see in the remake he's supposed to be much more and i quote like geeky and nerdy which is kind of a fun take on him um and we just kind of see like what 
how how these events unfold and now it doesn't know i don't jill valentine is obviously in this but it sounds like they're telling her story from resident evil one perspective as opposed to what happens in re3 which is kind of an interesting thing but i mean we see lisa trevor we see chief irons we see william and sherry birkin the fucking ashford twins from resident evil code veronica are in there for a split second in fact the director got actual footage from the game to throw it inside the movie which i think is so cool just because he is a huge fan of resident evil and i love it so much the semi-truck driver from resident evil 2 is in it as well the spencer estate is one for one in a lot of areas the rpd is one for one in a lot of areas like i am really just i'm so excited like y'all said fan service up the ass and i just that's what i want from this you know the mia is her name mia or mila the, mila. The, the, mila like those were entertaining themselves but like they didn't feel like resident evil right but this just feels so much like resident evil and i know there's gonna be so many fun little easter eggs in there to watch i am just thrilled i am just having so much fun even if this movie fucking bombs I will still be just so happy with the fact that there's all these little nods in this and it's something fun for the fans to enjoy. And I mean, like Andrea said, like I was really curious to know what someone like you would think who's just played the remakes recently, but you don't follow the lore, obviously like I do, but it sounds like you're kind of sold on it as well. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, I like horror movies. You know, this, it's one of our pastimes together. And I think that from what I've seen as somebody who's very surface level on my knowledge of Resident Evil, that it looks like it'll be fun. Is uh, it going to be the best video game movie of all time? Don't know. I mean, we'll see what comes up. But see, here's the thing. I watched, uh, I remember <sighs> when Mortal Kombat, the trailers came out for the movie. And uh-huh. I was like, ah, I don't know. This is probably going to be kind of kind of bad. And I watched the movie, and I, I really enjoyed it. I had a great, a great time watching it. So it might be yeah. the same thing with Resident Evil. Like, okay, maybe the trailer didn't do it for me, but maybe the movie will. So Yeah, I mean, you're not alone. A lot of people were really disappointed by the trailer as well. And it's either going to look good to you, I think, or you're just going to think it's like a giant heaping, steaming pile of shit because it looks a little cheesy maybe, and the CG <laughs> maybe looks a little crappy. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, but no, There's I'll be no really in curious. between, everybody. There's That's no, it. You no. have to pick no. an extreme. Pick your camp. There ain't no gray in this in this game. But anywho, I'm very excited. I kind of want to rent out the theater to watch it when it comes out on November 24th. Ooh. That's a great idea. Uh, Having right? done that recently, yes. highly recommend. Yeah. Really? Highly. Okay. Yeah. 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 Sounds oh, fun. I, be I so feel fun. free. I'm like, yes. <laughs> yeah. Come on down. We'll rent one here in LA. I would actually go see this movie in a theater with y'all if you decide we'll to. We'll bring the out. babies. It'll be great. Brittany, oh, come. We'll do it. LA. Okay. Per, what, that's one premiere. way to entice me. That's just that's one, <laughs> Let's that's do one it. I will watch a scary movie if you come to visit. Oh, I love that. Bribing. I love it. We're never above bribes. <laughs> All right. Well, that is going to do it for our official news. Before we get into what we've been playing, we have a few messages from our sponsors. This week's episode of Wesco Games is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Going online without ExpressVPN is like changing while leaving your windows wide open. You might not have anything to hide, but why give random creeps the chance to invade your privacy, right? Now, we all shop and browse online these days, and that activity seems to follow you just about everywhere. That's because when you go online without a VPN, internet service providers can see every website you visit. Yes, even if you're in incognito mode, your ISP can still see it. To make matters worse, they can legally sell this information without your consent to ad companies and tech giants who then use your data to target you. That is what all those cookie site warnings are about. If you guys know what I'm talking about, you always have to click accept all the cookies. That's that's what that is, friends. But there is a better way. You have the power to browse more anonymously. When you use ExpressVPN, ISPs cannot see your online activity. Your identity is anonymized by a secure VPN server. And your data is also encrypted for maximum protection. ExpressVPN is easy to use. Just fire up the app on your phone and click one button. Now, I can always tell when I forget to turn my Express VPN on because I get Facebook ads from very specific websites. Yes, I'm already shopping for Christmas decorations. Don't at me, okay? <laughs> Secure your online activity by visiting expressvpn.com slash what's good games today. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash what's good games and you can get an extra three months free expressvpn.com slash what's good games this episode of what's good games is brought to you by demon slayer 
Become the blade that destroys demons. Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaba, the Hinokami Chronicles, launches October 15th on PS5, PS4, Xbox, and Steam. Tanjiro, a kind-hearted boy who sells charcoal for a living, comes home to find his family murdered and his sister Nezuku transformed into a demon. Though devastated from this tragedy, he resolves to become a demon slayer to restore Nezuku's humanity and kill the demon that massacred his family. Based on the demon slayer Kimitsu no Yaba anime and the box office hit Mugen Train Arc Adventure Mode allows you to relive the memorable moments and thrilling battles. Versus Mode allows you to choose any combination of two characters to battle. With simple controls and exhilarating gameplay, rise up to become the strongest of the demon slayers. Master the multitude of spectacular skills on a wide roster of characters from the Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaba anime. Get Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaba The Hinokami Chronicles today, available in both Digital Deluxe Edition and Standard Edition by going to http bit.ly slash dshcwgg. That's bit.ly slash dshcwgg so they know that What's Good Games sent you. But don't worry, if that's too much for you to remember, we've included the link in our show notes. I spilled. I have to say. <laughs> we, ha- we made a mess oh, over no. here. <laughs> Have an oopsie. Uh oh. Let me get some paper towels. <laughs> time out. Time out. Time out. Party foul. You know, for all the times I've been in that studio, I had never spilled. I am covered in I was very in proud of myself. Congratulations, Britt. Andrea had spilled, but not me. Probably the clums- clumsiest of us all. So Technically, like, this goes. was uh, half my spill, half Andrea's. Oh. Uh, all right. Oh, What's good game spill? The base of this, too. Oh. It's because these plastic glasses are really fun and festive, but they they like to bubble. They bubble. Is that a scientific uh, thing? Like there's science to the bubbles? Of there the probably glass versus is. Plastic? I'm not sure why though. I bet TikTok knows. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I bet they do. I bet. Yeah. I I've recently gotten into the TikToks. <gasps> you got into TikTok? I'm 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 on it. I'm perusing the videos. Like, Can I'm I please send you videos? Of... Yes. Oh, I'm getting no. the lay of the Here land. It goes. I don't use TikTok. I'm trying to. <laughs> on a previous episode, I was trying to convince Brittany, and maybe we were talking about it before or after the recording, oh, to start our, opening our Pokemon card packs on TikTok because I get yes. served so many Pokemon card opening live streams. And one night at like 3 a.m. when I was bumping, I was just like sitting there watching this dude opening Pokemon cards yes. for like 20 minutes. I was like, why am I watching this guy just open these card packs? What's wrong <laughs> you know, with me? You know, it's funny about that is because I had thought about it. Like I could open some packs on there and then Andrew's like, you should do that. I'm like, okay, reinforcement, let's go. And I actually have a box of cards that I'm just, Ooh. I just got to do it. Brit. This could be the moment. This could be the moment for you. But then once I start, I got to commit to it, Danny. Uh, The algorithm doesn't take your previous videos into account. You'd be fine. Oh, okay. Shit. It's true. You just got to use the right hashtags. And whatever promoted music is, that's the key. Mm -hmm. The promoted music. Really? Yeah. That's that's your TikTok hack, everybody. TikTok algorithm heavily favors your videos when you use the promoted music. Correct. Did you music? Mm. Did you use the music for when you uh, show the play- PlayStation Five? I did. Mm-hmm. You did. Wow. Oh, interesting. It worked. Cool. Mm-hmm. Mm. Did that have something to do with the success of my one viral TikTok? Maybe. Who's to say? Who's to say? Anywho, <laughs> this isn't about TikTok. We're here to talk about what we've been playing before we get into our back for blood experience because that's what a lot of us are going to be talking about slash all of us are going to be talking about this week danny brought his shiny new piece of hardware that's right the nintendo switch oled look at that thing now give it a little tilt so we can see the shine off the screen yeah oh Oh, your vanna white your fingerprints oh my fingerprints are still there nice nice and and shiny wait hold on a second hold on wait turn it on let's see what it looks like i gotta i gotta put the Kick, oh, the look at that big boy kickstand. Can you turn that around for a second? Yes. And show the camera. It's a thick one. For everybody watching at oh, youtube.com slash nice. what's good games, that is a proper kickstand. And it's yeah. not that little dinky even. thing that they <laughs> So right now I'm has. showing Hades. Oh, wow. Ooh. Ooh. up a little bit higher. Oh, wait, sorry. I have to <laughs> set up. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the vibrant colors from here. No, that's, yeah. Yeah. that's pretty. Yeah. I, I think this can is. Can you hold it up for me? Yes. I mean, like, that's impressive. 
Yeah, it is. Yeah, That's very nice. impressive. Yeah. I think uh, this is um, handheld. I, I love this. Love this device. It feels premium. I was talking to Re when we recorded a episode of Gamer Tag Radio a couple of days ago, and I really enjoy this this device big time. Now, the game that I've been playing the most is Tector Effect Connected. It's very colorful. Mm. Oh, it must be beautiful. Mm. Oh, yeah. Very, very beautiful. And today was the first time I, I tried Hades because everybody was telling me, Danny, you have to try this game out on the uh. Switch. And I did it. And yeah, they're right. This game is like top of my list of like games that you need to play on this device. But it's still not 4K. It's not 4K. Now, right? No. It's yes, 1080p. It's, it's 1080p. But the only issue that I have with this device is when you put it on dock mode, there's no major changes at all. Right. No major changes. But for handheld, oh, it's a complete because I have the first generation switch. So you, you mm -hmm. definitely can tell the difference. Not only the way how it looks, the way how it plays, but also the battery life is like drastically a big change for from the one that I have. So, but yeah, I, I recommend this game, Hades, uh, Tetra Effect Connected, Metro Dread. I don't know, uh, mm -hmm. Brittany, have you been playing that? Metro I, no, Dread. No, no, I, I, I want to, but I don't need anything that makes me frustrated right now. I was like, Not do anything. you want to? <laughs> it's do really you challenging. Want to? It's a tough, I, tough game. But yeah, I've heard nothing but phenomenal things about it. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want to get angry right now. You know what and I mean? And it's been selling pretty well. Like, it says mm -hmm. that it's helping the franchise even more. Like, a lot of people have been buying that game a lot. So yeah. that's that's positive because I can't wait for Metro Prime. Prime 4, right? Yes. Yeah. Prime 4, yeah. yeah I'm, right, I'm excited for that. So, so does uh, the Switch feel more sturdy? Because that's one of the things. Like, the OLED screen, fantastic. But my Switch right now feels so first generation, so rinky-dink. Like, the kickstand already busted off. So I have no kickstand. I just have like this gaping hole with like the the SD card in it. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it is. Yeah. And then the left Joy-Con feels so loose. Yeah, it's my like, left I have a wiggly Joy-Con too. Yeah. And I swapped that Joy-Con three times. Mm -hmm. Still wiggly. Right. I heard there was an improvement that they made for for these uh Joy Cons right here, but it feels good. It, I don't know. It feels a lot different this time. Cause hmm. May I may I hold it? Yeah, <laughs> go for it. Go for it. <laughs> I apologize for my fingerprints on the screen. <laughs> on the screen. Don't but, don't worry about yeah, it. It yeah. does feel like it's like a little bit weightier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm, even when heavier. you touch the the top part where the fan, it feels more like premium. premium. Yeah, premium. Th yeah. That's the word. Yeah. Yeah. It feels more premium. Yeah, because yeah. the one before I felt like it was very cheap, like it easily would yeah. break, you know. But like you said, the the, the stand, like I will travel. This oh, is yeah, pre pandemic. Mm -hmm. I'll be check traveling this. a lot. And I'll put it on like on a flight, just uh, like a stand a there. Tray table, yeah. It a nice kickstand, man. But this one. This is what they should have done the first yeah. time. Yeah. But this yeah. is perfect for local co-op. Like let's say yeah. Re and I were traveling. Hey, Re, let's let's play. Right. We release the the Joy Cons, and I'll put this on the side. We could even put this like all the way to the bottom, like mm -hmm. this. Like you see, Ooh. just barely props up. And we could God, both play. Nice. Yeah, it's really, really you cool. You can also put it in vertical mode when you take the Joy-Cons off. So if you're playing something like a down well, mm -hmm. you can put it, mm -hmm. and the yeah. kickstand will hold it vertically pretty solid. Mm -hmm. as well. uh, oh. Wait, what? Yeah. yeah. You want to pop that off and show? You can play it. What, I, first off, I've never played anything vertically on my Switch. I don't know how many games there are, but you can, absolutely. Yeah, it's Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. Look yeah. how solid that is. What a is. time to be alive. My it's almost God. like if TikTok made a Nintendo Switch app, it'd be perfect. Yes. Uh, yeah. Now, another just thing. Scroll, scroll, scroll TikTok on your um, big OLED screen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, speakers, it sounds pretty good, too. It's, it's, okay, yeah, it speakers loud. are supposed to be better. And there's a LAN part. Now, do you use the same dock? Yes, as the you can first use generation. The same. So I have, it, it comes with a new dock, and this one okay. is a lot better because now I could connect the Ethernet cord in there. Mm. And now the download speed from oh, when that I'm, makes such a big difference, huge yeah, difference, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and especially if you're oh, planning no, to game, uh, plan to play a game like uh, Smash Brothers uh, online, it's going to be a lot better this time around, a lot better. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Hmm. I ha see. I have that exact model. It's still in the box. It's the white one. But I've just heard that the transfer process has been such a pain in the ass. It's that I huge just pain. Is a, oh, is a no. pain. It okay. is a pain. So can you like yeah. walk us through like what happens in the transfer process? Yeah. So I know they gave me instructions how to do it, but I did it the old way. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to connect it. Uh, I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna say I'm going to use this uh, mm -hmm. and my other device too. But here's the thing. What happened to me the other day? I went outside with Ree because we were trying to show like some videos of us playing Nintendo Switch outdoors. Mm -hmm. And it was trying 
to pick up the internet and the games wasn't working at all. I'm like, oh my God, what does it have to do? So what happened was the setup with Nintendo, you only could have one primary console. You can't have multiple at all. So I had to go online and research, okay, how can I make this my primary console? So the way how you do it is you go and you go to, you go to the eShop, go to your account and deregister your older console. Okay. So once that's done, you go with this, with this version right here, your secondary one, you go online. Now this automatically will be your primary console. Is it's it like super deactivating confusing. your PS4? Yeah. Like that? It's kind of like that. Yeah. Okay. So I did that and now I could go out there and play any games I want. But at first it was frustrating. I was like, wait a minute. I, I transfer all my stuff. Why is it not working? It was because of that. Because mm. it was trying to like check licenses. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, interesting. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But now I'm I'm good. Now I set it up easily and um and yeah, I play all my games out outdoors now from now on. So it's been great. Okay. But that process That's is good. really complicated for those that are buying a secondary console for the first time. It's very very complicated. Speaking of playing outdoors, how is the OLED screen in Sun versus the screen of the old Switch? Because I also played my Switch outside like last summer. It was like my pandemic game device like i would go mm -hmm. outside and drink a coffee and play animal crossing like every morning mm -hmm. during the summer last year but it t sucks battery because you have to turn it up to maximum brightness and i would have to like you know macgyver a, like a little <laughs> umbrella situation to keep the screen covered so it wouldn't overheat it's a little bit better not the greatest but <laughs> full it, stop it's yeah. <laughs> slightly better but it also it also depends on the game like if you play a game excuse me you play a game like mario kart Touch of connected is very colorful. It's a lot easier to see. But if you play like a game, I was even testing out this out with Re, The Witcher mm -hmm. mm. is pretty bad out <laughs> outdoors. So uh -huh. it all depends on, on the game. Now, there are some settings that you can tweak in mm -hmm. deep, deep embedded in the settings menus that help up the backlight brightness. And it makes it mm. quite a bit different than the, uh, the old model of the Switch. Yeah. But it, it is... It is still a console in the sun. You know what I mean? Like, right. I would say temper expectations if you think it's going to glow like <laughs> like a light bright. Like, it's definitely yeah. not. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. It's not a Kindle. No. It's not a Kindle at it's all. It's not a Kindle. At all. It's still a, a, mm. an OLED screen. Yeah. 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 There's yeah. only so much it can mm. do. Exactly. How, did you have the OLED Vita? Yeah, I had a Vita. Yeah. Did you have the OLED Vita? Uh, I had the launch Vita. Was that? Yes, yes, that was the or the original launch Vita. Was the OLED Vita? Yeah, so that's and then the one that changed had. the screen later in the life cycle. I, had I was that just going to ask if you had a comparison because I know that the Vita is kind of like the de facto like creme de la creme handheld screen experience mm -hmm. when it comes to gaming. Obviously, cell phones have better screens. Like Apple's Retina screen is mm -hmm. delicious and wonderful, but it's not what a handheld gaming device is. Right? It does a lot of other things. So how would you compare this to playing on Vita? Oh man, that's a great question. I personally think this is this one is a little bit better, and the reason is because the screen is a lot bigger, bigger. than compared mm. to Vita. Yeah, that's the only thing I can remember at the moment. But yeah, <laughs> that was a long time I mean, ago. It, Vita. It, yeah, that was, I mean, defense, was, it was a while ago. <laughs> a very long time ago. <laughs> and and yeah, it, my Vita didn't last that long. I was like, okay, I, I love Luminous, but I want to see what else. Is oh, out no, there. The, the, the Vita <laughs> fan boys and girls are grabbing their pitchforks as we speak. I think no, that I no. think that 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 device was so ahead of its time, like it was so good. But yes, I agreed. felt like there was a lot of promises, like the the Call of Duty game and Bioshock game that never came out, and yeah, it was just like a lot of a lot of indie games, perfect for the Vita. Oh, it was great. But besides that, mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh, I've heard horror sorry, stories. attack me, uh, Godfrey. <laughs> Twitter. You want the violence? <laughs> <laughs> um, Andrew, I've heard horror stories, so I want you to be careful of people losing all of their Animal Crossing data. What? What? They what? Yeah, because I guess there's a specific way you have to do it, and I don't know what that way is, but yes. I've heard... You know what? Yeah. So I remember this now. Now you're, you're correct. So I'm not going to mention the name, but they gave me an instructions of how to transfer all my games, uh -huh. regular games, that's not Animal Crossing, and there was a separate link on how to transfer your animal crossing to the old to the switch oled i was like right. huh mm -hmm. but now it makes sense what you're saying now but it's like a totally that, different process but there's cloud saves with animal crossing now how did they lose all their data i have i don't no know I, I, I think that's the alarming problem is like it's there's a few different ways to do this whole process because you have your sd cards too involved if i don't 
fucking get all of it. Also, I heard that if you have Pokemon Sword and Shield, that that data is saved locally on the Switch, and it's not saved in the cloud, or I don't know, understand it. It's a whole mm. thing. Oh, so Nintendo, be careful man. with that, too. I know! Nintendo, what the fuck? Like, we just give them all of our money. All the f- Look at us, all suckers. We all have the new console. We're like, oh, we're so excited. Now that's actually yeah. here, we're like, uh, yeah. I don't even want to deal with it right now. But see, th- th- here's the, the conversation I was having with, with my co-host Paris the other day, Paris Lily. He was like, Danny, I went to my Xbox Series X and I downloaded, I think it was Fallout from the Xbox 360 days. And he downloaded the save from over a decade ago and it was fine. <laughs> like super easy to download. But why Nintendo is making it so difficult to, to download or to to transfer from one switch to the other, I don't. I just don't. I get feel that like thing. it goes back. See, Brittany's got her preach hand up. I feel <laughs> like it goes back to their legacy infrastructure and how they just never prepared for this digital moment, and now to redo it all is such a massive undertaking that some of their legacy games might not, probably will not run if they overhaul their entire back-end system but they're going to have to eventually right like they've been skating by up until now but we are marching towards an ever you know like inevitable future of all digital right Mm -hmm. it's something that's going to happen eventually absolutely so i think that they're going to have to address this at some point but when they're going to do it who knows i mean we've talked about this on the show ad nauseum of of me saying you have enough money, Nintendo. Hire the people that can make it happen for you. It's going to be painful, but just rip the Band-Aid off and get it done now. Yeah, and you know what? The 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 part that it kind of bothers me because, see, us, we're, we'll go online, we'll, we'll research. Like, it's easier for us to do this, right? But imagine the average person that have oh God, there's no way. a Switch. Yeah. Don't go to none of, like, gaming sites or Twitter. They just, they're fans of Nintendo. And they now buy this. That's gonna be messed up, man. Because now they're gonna lose all their process if they're fans of Animal Crossing or other games too. It's like they gotta make it easier for everyone, not just us, the hardcore. Yeah. You know, so. Right. Yeah. Oh, oh, Nintendo. Oh, Nintendo. I will go to their parks though. Universal Studios. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Nintendo Land. Let's go. I will also say, as someone who primarily hmm. plays Switch on my Switch Lite, this we might have two in the house. Like it really mm-hmm. does feel different. Like the Three. word. The word we keep using is premium. It feels more expensive. It feels more sturdy. It definitely yeah. feels like something that's going to last a lot longer, for sure. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's enough to make people not wait for what we all anticipate as Switch Pro coming next year? No. Okay, now, I have the old launch Switch. Yes, for me. If you have the, the second generation Nintendo Switch, I think you could wait. You can wait. If, if you, you have want. the now, light, you can wait. Now, if if you're a person that is always out there traveling and outdoor, then yeah, if you want to make some changes, go for it. Like I love the screen. The screen is drastically different than the, than the previous one. So, mm-hmm. but for you, Re, you have Nintendo Nintendo Switch Lite. Would yeah. you would you change it? To the, this? the Switch Lite is great. Battery life is great. It's perfect for travel. I don't feel mm-hmm. any need to to get it, except for the fact it just feels nice in my hands and. Mm-hmm. It's, it would be a treat. It feels luxe. It right? would be a yeah. treat. Absolutely. It's I not just, a necessity. I just wish they had the D-pad version of, of this. Like, I love the Nintendo oh, Switch yeah, Lite. Yeah. I just love the D-pad. With these buttons, and I get why this was designed like this way. And the Joy-Cons aren't interchangeable. Oh, because the Switch Lite, they're built in, right? You can't take the Joy-Cons. Correct. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. You so can't. you can have a dedicated D-pad because you don't need to take it off mm-hmm. to be its own controller functioning mm-hmm. on its own. Oh, I feel like that's a fixable problem. Well, I play the Pro Controller. I love that controller. That's one of my favorite controllers. With yes. the Xbox Xbox uh, controller too, so yeah, it's it's so good. So hmm. yeah. all right, well, I'm gonna have to unbox mine. I also have an OLED here. Technically, it's a John's, but <laughs> <laughs> can I ask you a question? <laughs> Which game will you try out first besides Animal Crossing? Because I know you're gonna say Animal Crossing. <laughs> Is there any any other games that you will test it out just to see how it looks on the like the screen? Probably Diablo Two Resurrected. Mm-hmm. Great choice. I think that's a great choice. I played all of Eternal Collection on my Switch. It was a really fun experience for me playing through that entire game because I dabbled in Diablo 3 when it originally came out, mm-hmm. but I never finished it because I had it on my PS4. And then, you know, we got the news about Diablo 2 resurrected, and I was like, ah, oh, well, Switch time it is. And so I think that's going to be the game. Great though, choice. Great though choice. Though I do want to see what doom looks like mm. doom looks really good it yeah. looks really good i'm yeah. of the wild 
What's up? Breath of Have the Wild. Have you checked out Breath of the Wild? Because I heard in some areas it can be a little too like right in your face a little too colorful. i haven't really tested out with that one i have i mm. did test out uh the auto worlds i tried that one uh loading mm-hmm. is ridiculous but uh it looks tried bioshock when you say ridiculous bioshock. you mean it's long slow long i mean the, the game it takes so long to load like it's yeah. like yeah, yeah but even with the older switch it's the same thing i but mean but it was that way on xbox one too it wasn't until series s that that like this one is fast. this one is worse. Oh. It's worse. I mean, I'm not surprised. <laughs> it turns out but, the Nintendo Switch is not as powerful as Xbox yeah. One. <laughs> but once it loads, it looks beautiful. It looks great. Um, and oh, what other game you said? Um, Bioshock. Bioshock. Look, Bioshock Infinite. Oh my God, it looks oh, beautiful. Oh, okay, yeah. gorgeous. Okay. Yeah, I actually have the game. Yeah, here. something we haven't really talked about is like the blacks are really truly black. That's too. OLED, right? Yeah. yeah, that OLED screen really does sing in the the high low contrast for sure. Do you can't, you can't see oh, it. Oh, he's got a game card. <laughs> a How game cute. Card. That's hey, adorable. I love Bioshock. Love Bioshock. I had to buy Physical the... Physical collection. That's the dedicated. Cole- <laughs> the whole collection. It's yeah. true fandom right there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but yeah, the, I love Bioshock too. Did you see my Big Daddy artwork inside the house? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's I don't like, remember. <laughs> he has no idea. He's like, I that. think so. <laughs> like, he where? doesn't know. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I'll show you my Big Daddy stuffed animal later. It'll yes. be fine. <laughs> Let's do it. Anywho, all right. Well, thank you for your impressions on the console. I wanted to make sure that we talked about that since it's brand new. So if you guys are interested, I have no doubt that there will be retailers doing trade-in bonuses. So if you have a Switch and you're interested in getting the OLED, Black Friday is around the corner. Just sit tight and maybe you can get yourself a deal and trade up and get yourself a brand new Switch for the holidays. Uh, Another big release this week, which you may have seen me post about on Twitter and probably seen a lot of other people talking about, is Back for Blood. Yes. So this game yes. is developed by Turtle Rock Studios of Left 4 Dead fame. They actually made another game that I really liked called Evolve. Which Loved was. Evolve. The 5v1. Uh, it was so fun. That I was played that cool. game. It was a 4v1. And I remember seeing this at E3. At E3, I'm like, man, this game has a lot of potential. And Mm -hmm. I don't know what I don't know what happened. It was just it just died really fast. Really fast. What happened was the gameplay, I think, felt a little lopsided, and you were getting people that were really good at playing the monster, and it was really tough to get a cohesive group of hunters together in order to be able to overcome. And so you would think normally, oh, well, for humans versus one human, it'd be fine. But I think games like Dead by Daylight have shown that that asymmetrical gameplay is very difficult to do well. Mm-hmm. And it's even more difficult to do well when you have an anemic online matchmaking community. Because clearly Turtle Rock knows what they're doing when it comes to co-op and multiplayer gameplay. They've been in the game for a long time. So I think a lot of eyes were on this spiritual successor to left for dead so i got to play with rihanna and danny a couple times this week and shout out to friend of the show khalif adams and friend of the show jeff (laughs) rubenstein who also joined our parties um each night and so far i'm kind of on the fence Brittany. i'm assuming you've been playing with your co-op partner number one yes i played a few matches of it but we also tried playing it when the child was awake so you can imagine how that went down yes (laughs) (laughs) so you guys just played two did you play with ai or did you play with public matchmaking so we it's kind of weird and it could have been because we were playing when it was in early access and maybe the kinks weren't all worked out but we had set the lobby to private and he and I were in a, in a group together, but there would still be people who would join our party like 15 minutes into the match. And I couldn't quite figure out why, but it turns out there's another setting and the options where you have to make your lobby private as well. It was, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me and it's a really convoluted way of doing it. But, um, yeah, we played a few matches and I'm still just a little, I think I have the general gist down and I think you guys have played more than we have, but I'm still a little unclear on the card system and how it really works. Is it really necessary? We've only played a few matches, like I said, so maybe we're still a little early on in tutorial phase, but I mean, to me as like someone who played Left 4 Dead very casually, it feels like more Left 4 Dead, which is not a bad thing. Obviously the card system is a big overhaul and I like that you can buy stuff in the little safe rooms, but um, yeah, I mean, we're having fun. There are a few like modes that I'm kind of or a few game gameplay mechanics that kind of were like annoying and again this could be because my kid was wailing that could have affected my mood dramatically <laughs> just <laughs> don't that out say there. but there was like a mode where you had to 
you had to grab explosives and place the explosives. Oh, and, yeah. oh yeah. You talking about boat. Act One? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. One? yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. That was the one, and I had just been brain fart. I brain farted, and I didn't realize that you actually have to like grab the explosive. And so like I went to the areas where you had to grab them. And sure, it says grab explosives in the top right, but the font in this game is so small that I just completely missed it. And so by the time I got to the part where you had to plant the fucking explosives, they were still on the fucking ship area and I had to go all the way back. And then I was frustrated. And then I was dying a whole bunch. And then we were being timed. And the AI, right now anyway, is just really bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I haven't just, played a match with the AI yet. When yeah. we were getting ready for the show today, I said that's like kind of my one area of knowledge that is lacking of how the ai works so you're saying that as expected the ai is kind of shit yeah i mean the gameplay itself is really fun but the ai just are not helpful they keep getting stuck they keep doing the glitchy thing where it looks like they're a strobe light you know they keep like getting oh, stuck no, on. oh really they, yeah, yeah they kept getting stuck on stuff and um that was kind of frustrating and you know whatever it is what it is it was early and we only played a few matches so i don't want to like say anything too like definitive right now but so far it's fun i'm excited to get back into it i think there's just a few little kinks that need to be ironed out that might lessen my frustration so far but that's and i do want to let everybody know that we were provided promotional copies of back for blood by warner brothers games and if you are listening to this conversation like what the heck is back for blood anyway it's a new first person cooperative zombie shooter Mm. and it's available on pretty much every platform series x series s xbox one ps5 ps4 pc with cross play and cross gen support across all launch platforms which is phenomenal and essentially it's basically you know you shoot zombies i mean yeah is it on game pass it, it is, is on, on Game Pass. Pass. It's on Game okay. Pass, yeah. Also, yeah. speaking really quickly to the crossplay, super seamless. And uh, as a very large Apex fan, <laughs> uh, way better than that. It, it's as simple as putting in somebody's, like we were playing on Xbox, we put in someone's PlayStation Network ID and it, it friended them immediately and we were able to play in like 30 seconds. Oh, That's nice. great to hear because I know that you've really touted Apex's crossplay as probably like the best of the best of crossplay right now. Oh, yeah. this one's this way better it. than that. Absolutely yeah. seamless. We didn't have any connection issues. Chat was really smooth. It was very easy. Well, I, I have to say one thing. Mm. Usually when we play together, we put it as like private chat. Yes. But for some strange reason, the game still will pick up your audio and you will hear double of the voice. So you have to turn oh, your yes. microphone volume down manually in the audio settings yeah. if you don't want other people to hear you. That seems like a Rex. fixable thing that they can patch. I hope they can fix it, yeah. but I find that so odd. I've never seen that with any other game. I don't know. It was just strange to me. But mm-hmm. It is yeah. a weird setting for yeah. sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Having played Call of Duty, Black Ops, Cold War, Zombies with you two, and really having that as a fresh comparison to a co-op zombies experience, they felt very different fundamentally. I think that on its face, you would think that there is a lot of things that they actually have in common. But the things that I noticed right away is that the gunplay between Turtle Rock and Treyarch is like wildly different. The way the guns feel, the way that you customize the guns and really how you pick up guns is different as well the way that you get resources in game is different and of course it feels like the campaigns and the narrative behind the campaigns is developed in a very different way i kind of like that in back for blood there is this hub world that where you can kind of run around with your teammates and you can go to a a shooting range and test out the guns you can spend supply lines points for specific card upgrades and it feels like there's a more communal experience there where as in call of duty you have that in a lobby but it's not the same it doesn't feel as interactive and immersive Mm. but that said i think the guns in call of duty feel a lot better and maybe that's just because i haven't gotten into more upgraded guns and you guys have played a lot more than i have do you feel like you are really enjoying the gunplay experience in back for blood you want to go first three yeah, uh, I'll talk about the gunplay. I, I definitely agree. I prefer the Call of Duty Zombies zombies gunplay simply because I'm more familiar with that weapons loadout. I've played almost every Call of Duty there is. And so like th- those are way more familiar. And I know what I like. I know like what single fires I like, what auto fires I like. I, I know I don't ever like shotguns. I, one thing that has surprised me is I love melee. 
in Ooh, Back for Blood. Yes. I am covered in zombie I'm blood. I'm so glad that you mentioned that because they actually make melee feel like a viable path towards success. Yeah. Whereas in a lot of other zombie games, it feels like melee is a means of survival and like I'm going to melee because I'm about to die and I'm only meleeing because I have no other option. I'm either out of ammo yeah. or I'm trying to get away or get a zombie off of me. But here it's like, no, melee is a legitimate strategy. And it's almost my first choice, I would say. So the way that I spec my character, I put on different cards, as Andrea mentioned, that allow me to recover health by meleeing enemies. And if I find a hatchet at the beginning of the game, I'm set for like the first act and a half. And the game campaign mode, which is what uh, the three of us have played together and what Danny and I have played the most hours of, has four acts. Each act has many different checkpoints within it. And when you get to act two, you're struggling if you're not really on point with your team. As Brittany mm-hmm. mentioned, bots will not really get you that far <laughs> in the campaign. So it, it does rely very heavily on co-op. It relies a lot on teamwork and the card system. Brittany, I don't know if maybe if you if we get a chance to play with you and we can go a little bit further, yeah. it starts to feel a lot more viable because you are specking with your team so Mm. we will constantly drop currency to one teammate so they can buy a team upgrade or we will like activate a card that gives a team health benefit instead of just an individual health benefit and that really does get you a lot further in your gameplay and it's starting to feel a lot like we just talked about it hades where you're picking cards specifically for that run in Mm. order to optimize what everybody else is doing and it's it's like a co-op hades zombies game which is the strangest mashup i've ever spoken out loud but i am absolutely feeling it but really quickly getting back to the weapons i definitely agree call of duty takes it however i'm not hating what i find I, i feel like the weapon drop rate is pretty generous they give you a lot of variety of different types of weapons you have shotguns you have rifles you have snipers which are pretty viable especially for the boss battles and (laughs) those sweet sweet melee weapons and they all feel very fair according to what level they are so you have common which is white you have blue green and i don't know if we've seen any purples but i've seen some gold attachments and Mm. and i do think that there's maybe some more room to get more familiar with them but in the beginning of the game they they feel very samey as long as it's the same weapon class and melee is absolutely the way to go but you know what it is too i think it's because zombies from call Call of duty zombies and back for blood is two different styles like i feel i could take my time with back for blood but with call of duty if it depends which version you play um the regular zombies it's like non-stop waves not, there's no type of breaks in there um, compared to Back for Blood, but Back for Blood, I really en- I'm enjoying it. But here's the thing, I prefer to play this with friends, yes. with people that I know, because mm-hmm. you definitely need to communicate with each other on things you do. Because let me tell you, Act Two and up, especially Act Three, it gets really challenging. What really, difficulty really challenging. are y'all playing on? Recruit, recruit, recruit. and that's oh, wow. recruit. I can imagine yeah. veteran, yeah, and and, and okay. up, oh, and higher. It's I think it's going to be very, very challenging. But even when you go to like act, uh, I think like halfway of two, zombies is like coming nonstop. So the only thing you have to do is as a group, as a team, you have to be shooting and just keep on walking. Shoot, keep on walking. You can't just stay in the same same area because eventually you're going to run out of bullets. Mm -hmm. I think that's a style of gameplay that I haven't played in a while this idea that you can't wave clear no. mm-hmm. that and that's i think also a difference between other zombie games and this game it's like no the zombies are just going to spawn indefinitely like they're just going to keep spawning and you have to just keep moving it really tells you like mm-hmm. just really engage with the level design and really go towards your objective more than anything and then stop to kill zombies only if you need specific items for them i think a lot of the people that we played with i think everybody we played with was rocking the card that was the heal for melee kills oh yes. yeah yeah um, yes. it's Which almost a must yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and the card system i think is really what sets back for blood apart from a lot of its competitors in the space because we've seen other games really comfort this style this year even like alien fire teams is doing something diff- uh, very similar gtfo on pc which is the game that's been out for a couple of years um has also doing something well i guess it has i guess it's like what two years that game has been out mm-hmm. um between early access and, and launch so that's doing something really similar and i think that 
what is interesting about the card system and the deck building is that they're taking some of these RPG elements that we know from other styles of games and saying, apply the sensibilities of what you would do in a deck building game and bring it into a co-op shooter. And that's where the teamwork really comes in. And I like that they allow you to build multiple decks and that you can build decks specifically for solo runs, build decks specifically for swarm mode, uh, which is kind of like the endless horde mode. And then for the campaign specific, uh, and I like that you can really choose, am I going to build like a support deck or am I going to build more of like a tank deck? And there's not a lot of games that allow you to have that kind of flexibility. And of course, like any game, there's a progression block where you have to play a lot to unlock stuff. And that to me feels a little frustrating when you're playing solo because it's tough to get to those later levels to unlock the cooler cards and the better characters if you're playing by yourself. Mm-hmm. And so hopefully there's a way for people to you know, progress and maybe they'll make some tweaks to the AI now that the game is out there amongst the masses and they'll be able to get much more player data back. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'll, uh, I'll also ahead. say just really quickly, Danny, mm-hmm. there's also a lot of opportunity to jump in with a set group of people if you're playing solo. So the matchmaking, pretty seamless. Like like people can drop in and drop out. If you drop in and a group of people are say they're halfway through act one already, it'll give you like three or four cards to pick so you can catch mm-hmm. up really quickly for that exact play session. So it doesn't punish you for you know having a life and needing to jump in <laughs> when your friends already put 20 minutes in. Hooray! And it's very <laughs> generous with your time and and the progression, it is really frustrating when you're by yourself, but I think it really gives a lot of opportunity for you to collaborate with people and to hop into matchmaking, even if you aren't on comms. And, and it does give you that catch-up mechanic so you don't feel like you're quite left behind. Now, I would like to ask all of you how you could compare this to a game like that they worked on, Left 4 Dead. Because I, I find this game better than Left 4 Dead and more challenging than Left 4 Dead, but I want to hear from everybody. I didn't play Left 4 Dead. Oh, you didn't? No, oh, that's a full stop. Great it was game. like it was one of those games that just kind of went by the wayside for me because I when that game originally came out, I didn't have a co-op crew. Mm. And I didn't mm. play online multiplayer games. I was like a solo game player like full stop. The only multiplayer gaming experience I had back then was like Rock Band and Guitar Hero. Like <laughs> legit. Which is great choices by the way. Thank you. But <laughs> very choices. different choices. <laughs> very different. I, I really enjoy Back of Blood more than than Left 4 Dead. And the reason is is the car system. I think it it changes everything and the replay value because of that is gonna make me go on and just keep on playing the game and, and experience different different challenges, right, Ree? Cause, yeah, absolutely. Because even before when you start a level, you can select the challenges. Okay, you want a, a speed run, or, or it could be a mis- a mystery boss, or like uh, what's the other Try to get through one? without setting off any alarms. Or birds. Oh, those That's crows. Tough. Those fucking yeah, crows. crows. <laughs> it's no joke. They're no, tough. no joke. I was, yeah. so the very first time I played with these guys, I like just like straight <laughs> ran into like the flock of crows. <laughs> Murder of crows, I guess it's called. And had no idea. They were like, oh no. <laughs> but, but for those that are listening, they don't know that when you set an alarm or you make some loud noises, it will attract a lot of zombies to to go to that area so it's like non-stop zombies so yeah. it can get really really challenging yeah it's almost like a horde mini game within the campaign whenever yeah. you set off an alarm or there's certain enemies that will raise an alarm if you get too close to them and and something else i don't think we've touched on is each level is very similar obviously the map will be similar um but some of the unlocks like the different rooms you can go into to uh, to open up weapons chests or different health pack upgrades mm. they're procedurally generated so you can't rely on your memory of the level the first time you went through for your second third or fourth time mm. and every time you play through a certain mission some of the locations of the bosses of the the upgrades of even just basic molotovs or grenades will be different so the replay value, I think, is way, way higher than most of these shooters, mm-hmm. for sure. I mean, look, if you have Game Pass, try it out. You don't even have to buy the full game. Just try it out to see. For, for me, I think this is the, for the service, this is the perfect game for Game Pass because now you can play with other friends that have the game. Or if if there's people that purchase it on any console, you can still do crossplay, like in, like Ree was saying earlier. It's a lot easier to just find people online and just play together. And um, 
It has been a great experience. I, I'm really enjoying this game a lot. And look, I'm a huge Zombies fan. Huge, huge, huge fan, uh, Zombies fan. So. Also, quick shout out to the writing and the characters. There's a lot of dialogue that your characters will just kind of on the fly throw out there. <laughs> Some of it's pretty laugh out loud funny. I've had a lot of those moments. I for forgot sure. to mention, like, depending on the character that you picked, um, they also have a lot of abilities to, like, uh, do certain things that other characters won't. So, like, the one that I had, I forgot her name, but I could... Carly. Uh, Carly? She's the one that could sense if there's any enemies around or... If there's an alarm by a door, I could sense it. I could I, I see the vision of like, okay, it's red. Then I'll tell everybody, okay, who has a toolkit? We need to work together to unlock this door. Or we'll bum rush, but <laughs> the alarm will pop up. And that means a lot of zombies are going to come in. And it's going to be a lot of challenging. Um, yeah. Things like that. So... Um, what, what is it your character? The character do you like to use? Yeah. And what is their abilities? I like the character mom. Uh, also, Ma I have a, a badass Ma outfit. Ma <laughs> Ma yeah, yeah. I have a great outfit unlocked for mom, and I, I love the way I look. <laughs> Andrew even threw always, out a shout out the other day. Bloody. The, always the bloody. The cosmetics in the game are pretty good. Pretty I've been good. playing as Holly. I mean, mm -hmm. of course, she's redhead, so yeah. I think Holly gives everybody more <laughs> stamina. Yeah, like plus 25 stamina. And, yeah, and useful. And she's definitely a, like a melee character, despite the fact that, that she's like kind of a. Yeah, yes. she's kind of okay. like a dainty, like, femme character for a tank, but I'm into it. Yeah. It works. She has her hat to the back. Candy. Yeah, yeah. This, this is good. And now, I, think, my, I think mom gives everybody a, an extra life, which <laughs> we need. Oh. Well, yeah. Carly, for me, I I give everybody, I forgot how much, I think 50% speed run for the whole team. Mm -hmm. Like, more speed, more speed. So yeah. Definitely need mm. speed. Wait, what about you? I'm the, what is, what, what's your character? The bet. I like the, the bat. bat. Oh, you too? Oh, hell oh, yeah. Okay. That's I face so tank. I, that's my middle is name. Is that like the standard, yeah. that's the standard pick for everybody is Holly? I well, think she's one of the four starter characters, yeah. right? Yeah. Because yeah. you, you start unlocking more characters later in well, the game. They, tell, let me tell you, once you start running, which you will, because you're going to need to sprint away from all the zombies that are trying to eat your face, stamina is a thing, and she's yes. got the most stamina buffs. And swing, too. That, that. She has a good <laughs> swing. Good swing. For yeah. sure. Yeah. So there you go. I say play this game. If you can, yeah. try it. It's and fine. It, if you have Xbox Game Pass, it's free. Match and me. if you don't, for Xbox $10. And PC. Xbox and PC. And PC. Yeah. yeah. $10 to try it out on Game Pass for one mm -hmm. month. Um, if that's the way you want to go. Or, you know, obviously it's available on a bunch of other platforms as well. Mm -hmm. I just don't know how when a game like this is in Game Pass, you play it anywhere other than Xbox, if you own an Xbox or a PC. Obviously, if you don't, you know, and you want to play. Fair point. You got to buy yeah. it like any other game that you buy. But if you have an Xbox, like for 10 bucks, this game is at a fantastic value. Now, is this full price $60? Because I, I haven't looked. I believe so. I don't know why it wouldn't be. Let's check. <laughs> yeah. Go, I think uh, you can justify that price with the replay value and all the different modes. I know Brittany has more experience with the other modes than we do. Yes, Brittany. Huh? <laughs> or were you just dancing for funsies? <laughs> I was dancing because my camera was glitching out, so I was having a party all by myself. Don't mind me. I'm over here. You I'm, need I'm, the glow sticks to make I it need official. A glow stick. it I have nothing to say. Fifty nine ninety nine. Yes. <laughs> I like it. What's I on like my it. Face? It's contour. Oh, contour. you are glitching out. What is happening? <laughs> what I don't is know, happening? But I love it. It, this isn't too bad compared to what we've had happen in the past. I look pretty normal. I don't have anything. Okay, it's bad. Oh, it's, like, yeah, no, it's good now. There it's go. Halloween, so you gotta, you know, hey. <laughs> we've you. had some really bad glitches, video Computers glitches haunted. before. Really? Yeah. yeah, fair. Yeah. All right. Well, outside of Back for Blood, I see Polka Crack yeah. here for one Brittany Brumbacher. <laughs> um, yeah, I. Ladies and gentlemen, I never thought that my fervor for Pokemon cards would reach the all-time high that it has. I collected the shit out of these bitches back in elementary school. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to you know, kind of grow out of this a little bit. It's worse than it ever has been. And it's terrible now that I have an income because I can buy Pokemon cards. No, I don't have too much to say here other than just I am back on the Pokemon trading card game wagon. And I can't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. And Ooh. there's, I know, I can't, I can't help it, Re. It's, it's a good thing, but it's a bad thing. So Jason and I have this really fun tradition of every Friday. We've done this probably for the past, like, two months. Hashtag pandemic life. Where we put the child to bed. 
and then we each have like maybe like 10 packs of Pokemon cards. We pour ourselves a glass of whiskey. We play Pokemon music. Friday is our food cheat day. And then we usually have like an abundance of very unhealthy snack items at our disposal. And then we just we just open Pokemon cards together. And it usually takes us like an hour or so because we just like nerd out and take our time doing it. And uh it's just a really fun fandom to be a part of. And I would say for the most part, it's very, everyone is just very kind and they're very, it's like a, a community. Everyone is just like rooting for each other to get these really fun polls. You know, we spend time organizing our cards and sharing pictures of our polls with other people. And we've been doing a lot more of that lately than playing actual video games. And I think the reason is, is because by the end of the day, to hop on and play a game such as like Back for Blood, which we're having a lot of fun with, but it's still like kind of high in- high intensity and, you know, it's not like an easy game per se. It's just more fun to sit with a chill pack of cards and a glass of whiskey and just open up some fucking cards. You know what I mean? So that's, Amen. Kind of, that's been our thing. And so there's a bunch of new um, card packs that have come out, like Pokemon Celebrations recently came out and it's kind of a rehash of some of the older Gen 1 cards that came out when we were kids and... Um, yeah, we're just having a really good time with it. And so, uh, unfortunately, you know, that, that has taken up a lot of our gaming time, but it's been good. It, it feels like a more intimate way to spend time with one another rather than kind of across the living room on TVs, you know, like just chatting about the game. It's more of like face-to-face interaction, which can get away from you. <laughs> As Andrea probably knows, when you have a, a f- almost a five-month-old in your life. So <laughs> it's been lovely. And that's my Poke Crack story. I'm sure I'll take the time to tell you all about my new polls as they come in. Sorry, you're in this ride with me now. Friends. I think you should do this on TikTok. I, I really yes. feel strongly about yes. it. TikTok, TikTok. Oh, I know I need to. I just need to do it. I need to start. And then I need to like have that commitment ready. You know yeah. what I mean? You could yeah. take the Poke World by storm, Brittany. Oh. Brittany's going to be all take over the, the news. <laughs> all, all over the news. Brittany. Yeah. TikTok. Me. Make sure to follow her. Oh, Danny, I'm not. I haven't launched yet, Danny. My height, I, oh, man. Sorry, sorry. I, 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 so you don't launch without the CTA. Come I on have now. to. I have to. Uh, com- it's I have at to Blonde Nerd, though. You could go follow Brittany <laughs> at Blonde Nerd. Blonde Nerd. It had to be the, the Blonde, Blonde Nerd. Nerd. The Somebody Blonde else Nerd. took Blonde Nerd. That bitch. <laughs> I know. <laughs> See, look at my rider dies here. I love it. They're ready to fight you, whoever yes. you are. We'll make a link tree. Don't really. worry, we got it. <laughs> we'll make a link tree. <laughs> <laughs> ah, all right well i'm happy that you're happy and as soon as you launch your pokemon live stream unboxings we will send all the friends to come and watch because i have been having a tiktok scrolling problem lately i you think it's stop. a solution i i will go ahead and just say if it's an addiction it's not really a harmful one <laughs> you know <laughs> if scrolling tiktok is wrong i don't want to be right it keeps my us sane during those middle of the night. Yeah, it keeps us sane during those middle of the night pumps. Yeah, you know, what I mean? you know that you have a TikTok problem when you're willing to watch your TikTok scrolls on mute because you don't want to wake the baby. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to make this work. Yet. You left your AirPods in the other room. You damn if you're getting up to go get them. Watching everything on silent. I guess we got so specific just now. <laughs> I mean, that's that's my life. It's either that yeah. or I'm spending more money on Amazon. And if my husband has to open another Amazon box that I've ordered, he just might divorce me. <laughs> <laughs> so, Poor John. Speaking of which, there's like two more boxes arriving tomorrow. Don't hate me, honey. <laughs> I've definitely been using the wedding as an excuse to order a lot. All the time. Well, if you need any uh, assistance with fun wedding stuff, let me know. Oh, um, yeah. Well, we can't close out the show without... Uh oh. Uh oh. It's time. Oh, is What's it happening? That? It's happening. It's happening. Without right, me making good context. on my bet. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, you may have remembered an episode of What's Good Games Live that Danny here guessed it on. And it was the day that the news broke. Yes. Right? yes. Or was the week September the news broke? September 28th, 2020. That was wow. a year ago. Yeah, over a year ago. I cannot believe that news happened a year ago. Time is a flat circle yes and we made a friendly wager on the show we had a spirited chat yes about what microsoft would do with bethesda Mm -hmm. and i was like this is a fuck ton of money i can't believe microsoft paid this much and danny was convinced that this would mean that starfield would be exclusive 
And I was not convinced. I'm still, to to be clear, not convinced. <laughs> Never give up. They're being, <laughs> nah, they're being cagey. If you look at everything they've said publicly, it's cagey. They Does haven't it smell said of it. They exclusivity to you. I, yeah. I could Is answer that, that but okay. go, go so ahead. So what we, what we specified mm -hmm. was that it wasn't going to come to any other consoles a la Street Fighter V and how that never left PlayStation 4. Mm -hmm. Or like Spider-Man never left PlayStation 4. We still don't know if that's the case, but they very clearly were like, it's an Xbox console exclusive because it's coming to PC. So to make good on my bet, Danny being the consummate gentleman that he is was like, you don't have to get me anything. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> nah, she's... A Drake always pays her debts. Yes. yes. And so I got you a bottle of one of my favorite red wines. Mm -hmm. so, I love red wine, by the way. So I asked him, I said, well, what do you want? Do you want whiskey? Do you want tequila? Do you want wine? He said, get me a red wine. So this is a really lovely red. So this is a 2017. <laughs> I saw I, I can hear Brittany in the back. I saw Celine's Cabernet. It's technically a Cabernet and Cab Cab Franc and Merlot blend called Justin from that's the winery, Justin. Uh, it's in Paso Robles, which is right here in California. So it's a, a it's a big be beautiful California red. Brittany, what's the matter? <laughs> Oh, Ree's hands were just fuck. They, that was sexy, girl. It's because she's got, got this hands. fly of manicure. Of course. Talk, did you just <laughs> yourself? Like, I did. Yeah. Oh, she's of course. She's got this beautiful. This, hold on. Let me you get the close up. Yeah, she's yeah, got come this come beautiful come manicure, which you guys can mm. hopefully see. Um, so I went and bought this. I don't buy this wine very often because it's expensive. But if I'm going to make good on my bed, you know, I got to get you the nice stuff. So. Here you are, Danny. Thank you. Congratulations. I you, just want to say. One I lost. I just want to say I love Andrea. We, we've, we've been friends for a very long time. And honestly, I do have a question, though. Uh-oh. Huh? When was it you were like, okay, I think Danny's going to win? I held out for a long ass <laughs> yeah, time. She can did. I say? She did. Yes. And your fans came at me constantly on Twitter that were like, hey, Andrea. Did I didn't you say see anything. This? I was quiet the whole time. Like, you know what? <laughs> I'm just waiting for Andrea to hit me up. <laughs> it was after, I think it was after Aaron Greenberg, their head of marketing over at Xbox, friend of the show and, you know, personal friend of mine who he had tweeted. For everybody who is not clear, <laughs> this is an Xbox console exclusive. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, it's time. It's time for me to just concede. But I hope that one day, if that exclusivity lifts and they're like, well, actually, like how we never thought that PlayStation would bring any of their exclusives to PC, right? Like I personally never thought that I'd see a PlayStation first party game on PC, you know? And now it's like, we got horizon and death stranding and or or mlb last the, of us is coming to pc so. mlb the show uh, also on xbox like who I was mean, expecting that i wasn't expecting that at i all. wasn't either what an what an awkward marketing deal that mlb like negotiated because when you watch all of the marketing trailers for that game and seeing the competing <laughs> logos it's weird it's man. very developed by sony santa monica but on xbox game pass just imagine this <laughs> turning on your console and be like all right i'm launching mlb the show and i see the playstation logo i'm like on that xbox console <laughs> i've never it's weird. Have thought of we're in time. a different time sam very different time but but honestly like i i know we had the conversation about exclusive or not i think Exclusives is not bad. That's going to make you go out there and buy the product or the service. Like we've seen that with, with streaming services with like Netflix and Disney Plus and, you know, Nintendo has been doing that for a very long time. PlayStation, you know, acquired studios all the time. And it's also exclusive. I don't see that as like a bad thing. Now, if I see Xbox buying too many studios, I'm like, okay, now this is like a monopoly. Like, I it's mean, way too much. I mean, like know? they've bought lot of studios yeah. yes but i don't know it's I, not a monopoly yet you know not why? yet not because yet not ea yet. is still the biggest publisher i mean yeah. i think now that microsoft has bought bethesda those numbers may shift in mm -hmm. microsoft studios favor it, we'll probably need to wait a year or two to see but with ubisoft still existing with take two interactive still existing I think that there's plenty of healthy competition. I think what Xbox is doing with Game Pass is really 
good for the industry overall because mm. I think it makes people reevaluate what are we asking gamers to give up and what are we giving them in exchange and how can we mm. make that more competitive? And not only that, I, and now I had this conversation with Ree, you know, what, growing up in New York City, you know, my mom didn't really, you know, my parents didn't really have a lot of money so I couldn't really like go out there and buy consoles all the time like how it is now. And I think with Game Pass, it's going to help a lot of low-income uh, parents and, and families who now buy games. Even if they don't buy the console, they could play this on their maybe smart TV or their mobile devices. Like, it's going to open the doors for for new gamers to go and, and try new games because of the service. So I, I think that part, to me, is like the best part about about Game Pass. So. New gamers and creators, too. And creators, and creators, yeah, you're right. Absolutely. I think it's interesting whenever somebody takes to social media and bashes, you know, Game Pass as something that's not good for devs. And I was like, don't worry. Microsoft is paying these developers. Don't think that because a game <laughs> launches in Game Pass mm -hmm. that they're getting less money for some reason. No, Microsoft's like, just footing the bill. You know, they're mm -hmm. doing what Epic Games did with the game, Epic Game Store, you know? I mean, right. think they're about it. Uh, imagine uh, <laughs> yeah. Outriders just... That's only in it. stores, not in Game Pass. It would have not been success successful, like because Game Pass <laughs> gave that push. Especially now, when we have the conversation about Back for Blood, that's helping the game a lot more, man. So, at the end of the day, I think it, people are going to discover not only AAA games, but also AA games and, and even indie games. People are going to discover more because of the service too. I think that's a great thing. Yes. Overall. No. And to be clear, I don't think game pass is bad. I don't think what Xbox is doing is bad. I just was so sure that because of how they had marketed the game so far and how ubiquitous Bethesda is as a brand across platforms since their early PC days, that they wouldn't make that deal for this game specifically that the games beyond that, of course, you know, would be exclusive, but I didn't think this game would be, but you know, I'm happy to be wrong if it means that you get to enjoy a nice bottle of oh, wine. Well, thank you. But Aww. but to be fair, to be fair, I think Starfield originally was developed for, for PlayStation and also Xbox and 100%, PlayStation. 100%. Yeah. Of course yeah. it was. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. know that because Bethesda made an exclusive deal for Deathloop and for Ghostwire Tokyo, yeah. right? So yeah. those games are PlayStation exclusives and as of now still are. And I think that you know, clearly they were developing Starfield and I assume Elder Scrolls six for multi-platform as well. And I think it's really going to be interesting to see Elder Scrolls not come to PlayStation consoles. I am kind of a bit bummed knowing how much time I spent playing Skyrim on my PS3, but that's, you know, more of a PC crowd game anyway. I mean, <laughs> think of this. Remember when, when Microsoft acquired Rare? Back then, I was so in shock. I'm like, wait, what? That was like a Nintendo platform. Like, everybody will just buy their games from 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 Nintendo, like Nintendo 64, right? So, I, I think um, it, I'm very curious to see how things are gonna be once Starfield comes out and Elder Scrolls and all these other games that used to be exclusive, for, not exclusive, for, but available for every other platform. Now it's only gonna be on Xbox and PC. It's gonna feel very weird. I'm going to grab my popcorn out there. and just doom scroll through Twitter because you know it's going to be a beautiful, glorious hot mess. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, but yeah. to that point, yeah. it'll be a hot mess on Twitter. But for the average consumer, they don't care. They, they don't, care. They don't yeah, know. know. They don't follow it the way we do. This They'll just be like, oh, that. it's on this thing that I already have or it's on this thing I don't have yet. It's very nope. straightforward for most of yeah. their audience, to be fair. Yeah. yeah. You're and not I, wrong. I think it's, it's a unique competition in the gaming industry. You know, I think... Because of this, now PlayStation is going to be acquiring more studios too. They, they need to be competitive too. Nintendo's going to do the same thing. I think that's good. And at the end of the day, us, the gamers, we win. Because now we have so many other more choices. And we're going to experience some cool things, I think, in the future because of everything that's going on between all these companies that are competing against each other. You know, So I think it's a good thing. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a great time to be a gamer. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, before we go, I want to give you a congratulations on your Times Square feature. Oh, yeah. As part of Hispanic Heritage Thank Month you. with Twitch. Thank you. I got emotional, by the way, because of How that. How could you not? That's incredible, yeah, man. Yeah, because, you know, I was telling Ree 20 years ago, I was in Times Square for the launch of Xbox. 
and seeing that was like full circle, you know. So yeah, that's your hometown. It, yeah, it's my hometown, and and especially seeing my mom there in Times Square, seeing the billboard, that was like, uh, I, I can't uh, beat, I can't beat that. That's best feeling in the world. And you have a big cool. stream coming up tomorrow that people who are listening to the show will be able to watch the VOD of. Yes. I'm actually uh, doing a, a Dominican dish. I, I'm actually cooking for the first <laughs> for the first for the time first on stream. Time. It's oh, going to be on front on page. On stream or ever? ever. No, no, no. I, I cook. I cook here and there. But it's not. It's so maybe like I, the fifth time ever in our apartment. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but I've never, I've never done this live on stream and also on the front page of Twitch. So that's going to be Ooh, very interesting. You can't be nervous. Can no, I'm not nervous. I'm not, ner- I'm not nervous at all. We're going to have fun. Like we... We did it and uh, we did a practice together. run. We did a practice run, and the most difficult part, I I had to do it because it was like it's called a, a Dominican dish called tres golpes. Um, it's a breakfast a breakfast uh, uh, meal uh, where you eat uh, mashed plantains with onions, salami, fried che- fried Dominican cheese, and also uh, oh. e- uh, fried eggs. So. It's so good. I'm literally it's so celebrating. Good. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so we got fried plantains, yes. cheese, onion, salami, yes. and egg. Yes. Sign yeah. me up. I'm in. It's a nice breakfast. I can make it for you. Yes. Yeah. We'll do it. Oh we'll do it. Gosh. It's so it's Aww. so good. We actually when we went to Punta Cana, when we were over there on vacation, we were eating that all the time. <laughs> that sounds like, so the whole good. Week. It's so, so good. so good. It's really, really good. Yeah, yeah. So where can people Ooh. watch the VOD of that? Yeah, as you go to Latinx and Games. Uh, the, it's on their official so channel. Twitch.tv slash Latinx in games. Last thing, yeah, Latinx in games. And yeah, if you go to Twitch.tv, it will be there on the front page uh, Thursday from 5 to five to 7. Well, so the yeah, show we'll comes there. out on Friday. Yeah. They're not going to know. Yeah, they'll have to VOD it. Uh, well, well, they VOD it. There you go. But they can <laughs> follow you on Twitter. Where can they follow you? Yeah, Godfrey at Godfrey, G O D F R W E. And you mm. host uh, an award-winning podcast? Yes, mm-hmm. Gamer Tag Radio. We're on every podcast platform. And now we're about to hit 1,170 episodes. Wow. That's, that's, a <laughs> that's a lot of episodes. That's a lot. lot. First yeah, gaming podcast dude. first gaming podcast in the world to hit 1,000 episodes, which is insane. That's, That's so impressive. Worth a congratulations. A round of applause. Thank you. Oh, man. Jamie and his co-host. Let's pop this bottle. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I will drink that with you. Let's you do really it. Yeah. Let's no, go. I also um, want to stroke Danny's ego real quick because I feel like I see you everywhere, my man. I feel like you're not. if you're not doing interviews, you're doing presentations. If you're not doing presentations, you're doing like classes on how to podcast. You were just killing it lately. So I just want to give you a huge props because I feel like you're just fucking doing everything and you're thanks a lot i yeah you know what at at, uh my goal is to inspire as many people as possible um for them to do the same thing you know i've been doing this for 20 years just you know content as a content creator uh podcaster almost 17 years and i just want people to see like hey look everything was not perfect but i kept on going i never gave up and Mm -hmm. and i think the most important thing too is you have to have fun Overall, if you're not having fun with doing this, like Andrew, you've been doing this for a very long time. You still have fun. Still to this day, you and Brittany has fun doing this. You know? It's so. true. I was just talking with a friend of mine today about how burnout is such a real thing that content creators have to deal with. And, mm-hmm. you know, being a content creator in the pandemic was its own special sort of hell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. how it's so tough because normally our escape working in the video game industry are the trade shows, are the events, the travel to previews and getting to see each other in person. It kind of makes the grind worth it when we get to see fans of the show in person at our what's good games meetups or whether we get to see friends like you at like a preview event and we get to talk about the games that we're playing and the content that we're making and we haven't got that now it's been over a year and a half and who knows when it's going to resume it's probably going to hit two years before stuff really looks like it's going to start resuming again and mm-hmm. it's been hard and so i think like Brittany said it's a testament to your ability to keep on hustling as a content creator and I would love to get you back on the show where we can all kind of chew the fat on what it means yes. to make podcasts and yeah, yeah. content creation. Yeah. We can talk about the mm-hmm. classes that you have and mm-hmm. people are interested. Um, and it's been great. And I mean, 
Brie, you are launching a major brand <laughs> in less than a month. That's that's bonkers. Uh, it is. <sighs> it is. It's it, it's definitely important to acknowledge how hard all of this shit is. And yes, I'm very grateful you brought up the term about burnout. It's real. Pretty much everybody I know is burnt out at this point. And you have to have people around you who keep you excited about things. And having those download moments at conventions were really helpful. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, what's taking the place of that are group calls or our ladies chats or, you know, coming at Brittany on Twitter randomly about something very <laughs> suggestive. And it, it's just so important to have people around you who inspire you. Like, Danny inspires me every single day to keep going. If he wasn't in my apartment, I don't know how I would have gotten through trying to launch a TV network in COVID. I, like, it's important Can to we have just, like, people stop in your corner. Launch a TV network in COVID. Yes. You fucking yeah. badass. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> it's hard. That's all. I, and I want to say this, too, because I, I, uh, this is the thing I love about Re. You know, I been through a lot in my life you know the past couple of years have been really really rough for me but uh re helped me so much during covid oh my god like oh, i love it so much so i just want to say thank so you so much specifically toast to you thank you so much for all the help it's been it's been crazy crazy uh, year but yeah. yeah keep your friends close y'all but seriously mental health is important Yes. Having some place to unplug and say things that are inappropriate and <laughs> finding a safe space. Like it's so it's so real. Like you really need that shit. And like yeah. lean on each other, find your co-op partners in life and in gaming and do not let them go because yeah. they will get you through this stuff. For Absolutely. Real. <sighs> but we love you both so much. Thank you for being on the so show. Much. And we want to get you both back on. Probably going to have to do it separately so we can actually give you each your own individual spotlight, but together, whenever, because this has been a fantastic hey, show. Oh, We've yeah. been engaged, so we got to celebrate together. So, you know. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. Let's go party. Let's do it. We just oh got to get Brittany back down here. I miss my blonde nerd. It's been too long since I've given you like physical hugs. Mm -hmm. There's been no physical touch between us since March 1st of 2020, and that's a yes. sin. How sad is that? Wait, to March? Literally. That's when they're in COVID? 2020. 2020. Wow. East, man. That was it. Pax East was the last time I saw Brittany in person. Wow. If we only knew back then. Yeah. I mean, because we both were pregnant, so it wasn't safe for yeah. us to travel, you know? Yeah. And then I, you know, was in the hospital for like three fucking months. <gasps> we don't want to talk about that right now. Uh. Instead, we're going to talk about how excited we are for you two. Congratulations again on your engagement. Don't forget, November 16th is the launch of G4. <laughs> And Danny, if people want to find Gamertag Radio. Yeah, Gamertag Radio. Search for uh, search for us on any podcast app. We're out there. And subscribe, follow us. And hey, like mm. you post reviews for What's Good Games. Hey, post reviews about us too, man. It'll help us out. I think it will help podcasting in general. So yeah, go for Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And Rhea, if people want to keep up with all of your shenanigans... Where can they go? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, most of my shenanigans happens in private, but a lot of it happens on Twitter. <laughs> go. You can follow me at Rihanna Tweets Now. That's R I A N A Tweets Now. I will definitely be tweeting more about G4 now that the news is out and I can finally talk about shit publicly. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'll be retweeting absolutely everything about our schedule for launch day and beyond. And keep your eyes peeled for some merch stuff coming soon. Ooh. Well, well, well. All right, everybody. Yes, go ahead. I, I fully expect you to tweet tweet your winnings. Oh, have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye.